this book of mine is called Ruler of the Courtyard. And the idea behind this story, it came from a friend of mine who told me that she used to be, a, when she was growing up in Pakistan, she was afraid of chickens. And uh, my mom, she told me a story about this, uh, uh, the, this time when my grandmother, uh, my nani, she was going to the, the bathhouse. Back then, the bathroom was outside the house. And she was going to go take her bath, and she thought she, thought she saw a snake in the corner. So this story really deals with, a, with fear. It has the beginning, the middle, and end that I mentioned in Bedtime Bach. It And the problem definitely gets worse in the middle. Uh, this story is also a circular story. It goes back to the beginning of it. And uh, it really gets worse in the middle. So what happens, this girl is uh, from Pakistan. She's, she, this is story is set in Pakistan, in rural Pakistan. So in her house, the bathroom is outside. And she's afraid of chickens. So she has this dilemma. It's kind of about uh, female empowerment. So she has this dilemma. She's scared of these chickens, and the chickens rule the courtyard. What I do is I talk to kids about what a courtyard is, what's a ruler, because a lot of kids don't know. They think of a ruler just as the measuring stick. But this is the ruler like the boss, and some of the kids figure that out. So she's, she needs to cross the, bath, bath, the courtyard to go take her bath every day. And the, if you'll notice the use of language in the book, at the beginning, the, the sentences are long. They're flowing. Because, yeah, she's scared of the chickens, but it's, it's more of an intellectual fear. It's not as bad as it's going to get. So she says, chickens, big and small, seem to have a certain know-it-all knack for sensing when I'm feeling scared. I can't remember when I had no fear of them. They've been the very terror of my life. Bony beaks, razor claws. They've got glittery eyes that wonder, wonder as they watch me, how easy it would be to make me scream. So this sets up her fear. And I always think of this picture as her looking out her window at, where, at the bathhouse where she wants to go. And then she starts running. Squeak! The door swings open. I, as, um, sweet, I peek in both directions. The way is clear, not a bird in sight. Dash to the bathhouse. Out of nowhere they come running. It seems I haven't got a right to cross the courtyard. So you can clearly say, see, that the beginning of the story, the chickens rule the courtyard. That's important. Okay, so she gets into the bathhouse. Slam the bathhouse door. Inside it's safe and quiet. Scratching at the dirt, they wait eagerly outside. They must know I have to leave sometime. This is how diabolical the chickens are. They know she's in there. So they wait. You can kind of see them through the walls. Fill the bucket, find the soap, wash my hair and lather up. Forget the terrors lingering outside. Rinse well and I am done. Towel dry and dress. Sit upon the bench and comb my hair. So I've done, done it in a certain rhythm. Look at the rhythm of the language. Now, how peaceful and silent it is inside the bathhouse. How dim and calm and cool I take my time. But then I spy a curled up something in the corner. How did I miss it within easy striking distance of the door? Now, I don't say it's a snake because it's actually not a snake. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a drawstring, but you're not going to find that out until later. But she sees something really scary in the door, in, in, in the corner right by the door. Now, so this, she's gone from being scared of chickens to something that's really scary. And here is where you could tell kids, look, in Pakistan, the snakes are usually venomous. So everybody's afraid of snakes. So what happens is she imagines that, it, 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 that her grandmother could come running. It's brownish black. Is it moving? Is it hissing? Is it watching? Waiting till I'm close enough to bite? I want to scream, but if I do, Nani will come running. Nani's her grandmother. Nani will come running. Footsteps heavy, pounding, alarming coils of danger on the floor. She'll come bursting without knowing through the door. Now, so this is where the rhythm of the language starts changes and there's a reason for that so what I did this story actually took me five years to write and there's a reason for that I talk about it in the presentation that I give I talk about why it took so long it's a good story to share with the students about fear and then at the end the end this the it's it's also about how a, a, a big fear can squish a little fear so the fear of the chickens squishes the fear of the I mean sorry the fear of the snake squishes the fear of the chickens. And I also wanted to show that love, that when, you, when love can 
I can't conquer fear because it's the love for her grandmother that allows this girl to overcome her fear of the snake. She actually stands up to her fear because she doesn't want her grandmother to come running in, in into the bathhouse and get bit by what she thinks is a snake. So because of that, she faces her fear. And in facing it, she realizes that it didn't really, uh, it wasn't really anything to be afraid of. And then she's confronted with the chickens because <laughs> they're still waiting. And at, by this time, every kid knows, no, she wouldn't be scared of the chickens after all of that. So she has changed. But really the theme of the story is who rules the courtyard at the end. She says, she says, did the chickens really scare me? It seems a little, uh, it seems so long ago. They're savage little bullies, nothing more. And then she, she's going to chase the chickens. So who's ruling the courtyard at the end of the story? It's Saba, the girl. And, and look especially at the last sentence. And now the chickens know I've got a right to cross the courtyard and walk wherever I may wish to go. See, I've gone back to the long flowing sentence. In fact, that sentence is called, um, it has a iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter, you know, the beats. It's five beats and it, and it sounds like walking. When I'm writing the story, the most of the story, the, the sentences are short, staccato sentences, because what I was doing is I was imitating the breathing patterns of someone who's really scared. So when someone's actually reading the book, what happens is they start panting, which is what the kind of breathing you would do if you're really scared, but you can't make a lot of noise. So you start panting, is brownish black? Is it moving? Is it hissing? Automatically, when you're reading the book, you start panting. And what that does is it actually tells your brain, I'm scared, I'm really scared, I'm really scared. So it actually heightens the terror of the story. And then you realize that it was just a drawstring it's like, yeah, it wasn't something to be scared of. And oftentimes, the fear that we have is something that's not necessarily something we should be scared of. It's how we can overcome fear. So I used language. I used the rhythm of the sentences. Basically, it's poetry. And at the end, I used iambic pentameter to make it sound like she's walking. And now the chickens know I have a right to cross the courtyard and walk wherever I may wish to go. It's a rhyming couplet. And you know who did that? who finished a lot of his acts or scenes with a rhyming couplet. And yeah, I'll admit it, I, I copied him. Shakespeare. <laughs> okay, Shakespeare would do that. He would finish an act with a rhyming couplet because it has a, such a sense of finality to it. So when you're copying, make sure you copy from the best. So that's just a little bit behind this book I wrote, Ruler of the Courtyard. It took me five years to write this book to get the language just right to do what I was trying to do. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.